Many people judge that Juan Manuel Fangio was the greatest racing driver the world has ever seen. Throughout the 50s, he completely dominated the sport. No one could touch him. In his familiar number one car, he won five world championships and 24 Grand Prix. Fangio was born in Buenos Aires in 1911. He began his motoring life as a mechanic, building his own car which he raced in South America with great success. He came to try his luck in Europe in 1949 and never looked back. He began racing with Alfa Romeo but later tried many other cars, Mercedes, Ferrari, Maserati and had equal success with all of them. Such was his fame that in Cuba, in the days when Fidel Castro's guerrillas were still trying to overthrow the government, as a publicity stunt he was kidnapped to prevent him taking part in the local Grand Prix. Fangio was released before the start of the race, but too late to take part, which was just as well, because the whole thing ended in tragedy. Suddenly, disaster. Skidding into the crowd at 100 miles an hour, one of the cars mows down dozens of spectators. The driver, Armando Garcia Cifuentes, is dragged from the wreckage with serious injuries. Six deaths and 32 others injured are counted in the crash, which cancels the race and all its sporting luster. But it was in Europe that Fangio made his name. In the post-war years, British racing drivers were getting into their stride. The sport attracted growing interest, even from royalty, as engineering firms competed to build the best cars, and in the main, recruited British drivers to race them. Fangio represented by far the greatest challenge from abroad, and the rivalry was intense. The British Grand Prix in 1954 was just one of the many titles he won. His reputation as a driver, among other drivers, was fearsome but his style was smooth and safe. Fangio retired in 1958, but he came back to Britain nine years later to take part in an exhibition race. He was already a household name before many of the other drivers who took part had passed their tests. set off in a pre-war Mercedes-Benz on a belated lap of honour. Drivers since that time go much faster. The hardware has changed out of all recognition. But most of the experts there agreed that the old South American master was simply the greatest racing driver that had ever lived.